The Millionaire Real Estate Agent by Gary Keller, Dave Jenks, and Jay Papasan, published in 2004. The Millionaire Real Estate Agent explains how a real estate agent can build a lucrative business and routinely net $1 million or more in personal income by copying techniques from high-earning industry professionals. Authors Gary Keller, Dave Jinks, and Jay Papasan use interviews with dozens of top real estate agents, along with their own experiences in the field, to outline a strategy even novice agents can use to reach their true earning potential. By learning from successful real estate agents and following their methods, readers can improve their marketing techniques, reach more potential clients, identify and hire top talent, and eventually create a sustainable business that generates passive income. Emulating the practices of those who are already netting more than $1 million in passive income annually allows a real estate agent to avoid costly mistakes. An agent who acts on impulse rather than careful planning will likely never gain strong momentum. High-earning agents focus on proven methods, invest in personal development, treat their job like a business, and look for ways to maximize their effectiveness. An aspiring millionaire real estate agent must take on three main tasks, generate client leads, seek out seller listings, and learn how to leverage time effectively. These three tasks, which make up less than a quarter of the average agent's responsibilities, can account for more than three quarters of his or her profit. No matter how knowledgeable or skilled agents are, they will be unable to stay in business if they cannot accumulate client leads. Real estate agents can generate these leads by actively marketing to prospective clients and engaging meaningfully with existing customers. Agents should not rely solely on customer referrals to grow their business, but should directly seek out new clients on a continual basis. If real estate agents want to grow their income substantially in a short period of time, they should increase the number of seller listings that they acquire. Agents can obtain seller listings more easily and cheaply than they can help a client buy a house. Not only are seller listings easier to accumulate, they also provide better marketing opportunities because they allow agents to advertise to potential clients who have not previously been contacted. Homes for sale can be advertised in newspapers, through direct mailers, and in online ads. Successful real estate agents know that their efforts will be much more effective if they manage their time wisely, hire the right people, and emulate the practices of agents who earn $1 million or more a year. A millionaire real estate agent constantly strives to generate the most profit from the smallest amount of effort. If agents focus on accumulating client leads and seller listings, they will have already taken a big step toward efficiently leveraging their time. Hiring the right employees can also help agents use their time effectively by allowing them to delegate tasks that slow down their workday. By carefully choosing trustworthy and driven workers, agents can build a business that eventually does not require their constant attention and presence. After mastering the process of generating leads, accumulating seller listings, and effectively leveraging their time, real estate agents must go through four stages of business growth. They must first learn to think like a millionaire real estate agent. Next, their business must earn $1 million in profit on an annual basis. After that, an agent must generate enough sales to net $1 million in personal income annually. Last, a successful agent must passively receive $1 million or more in annual income from the business once it has been built. Anyone, no matter their track record, can become a millionaire real estate agent if they are willing to put in the work and commit to proven methodologies used by agents who reached this goal. Key Insights 1. Real estate agents who doubt their abilities can severely limit their earning potential. 2. Repeated failure is necessary for eventual success. 3. Even when business is plentiful, real estate agents should never stop generating client leads. 4. An administrative assistant should be a real estate agent's first hire. 5. An ideal employee goes beyond the minimum requirements of the job description. 6. By requiring employees to routinely document their methodologies and results, a real estate agent can more easily hold staff accountable. Seven. 
Millionaire real estate agents tackle difficult but essential tasks first. 8. Successful real estate agents set and maintain focus on long-term goals. Analysis. Key Insight 1. Real estate agents who doubt their abilities can severely limit their earning potential. Many real estate agents think that they are incapable of generating $1 million in profit on an annual basis, but these agents have never truly attempted to meet this goal. They have not determined how many listings they must sell on a monthly or yearly basis to improve their business, or planned out how often they must advertise and directly contact clients to generate a sufficient number of leads. Until agents try to become a millionaire, they are not capable of judging their limitations. Often, an agent's self-doubt stems from fear. In a 2016 Science Magazine essay, David G. Jensen explains that when people's anxieties limit their career, they generally fear not only failure, but also success and change. Fear of success can stem from a sense that you aren't good enough to tackle your challenges and that you have been given opportunities and accolades you didn't earn. Fear of change, on the other hand, often comes from the worry that if you try something new, you will be bad at it, and that you should stick with what you know to ensure long-term success. If you suffer from fear of success, Jensen advises that you reach out to friends or to professionals in your industry and confess any concerns you have about your abilities. If you suffer from a fear of change, you should recognize that it's unlikely that your life and career will continue on the same trajectory forever. Markets fluctuate frequently, and a real estate agent who easily finds buyers one year may struggle to find anyone willing to invest in a home the next. Jensen recommends that workers devise backup plans that can help them survive unwanted or unexpected change. For real estate agents, that backup plan may involve setting aside money for less profitable years or researching a market in another town to increase the number of potential customers. By acknowledging how different types of fear can limit your career, you can plan for the future and mitigate anxieties that might slow down your progress. Key Insight 2. Repeated failure is necessary for eventual success. Real estate agents' attitude toward failure determines their eventual success. Failure should be viewed as a learning opportunity. By failing, an agent is able to eliminate losing strategies before trying out another technique. An agent must be willing to fail repeatedly without losing focus or drive. Only once an agent has stopped trying to overcome a challenge does he or she truly fail. Since success is easier to achieve after a certain number of failures, Agents may choose to aim for a certain amount of failure on a yearly basis to ensure that they are putting maximum effort toward achieving their goals. For example, a tactic that could be borrowed from writers is to aim for a certain number of rejections each year. After a certain number of rejections, they are sure to get at least one acceptance. For example, a motivated real estate agent who wants to learn from failure may decide that he wants to be turned down by 100 potential clients each quarter, or that he wants to receive three rejected offers for each listing before a winning bid is identified. By setting a failure goal, he can allow himself to make mistakes without becoming paralyzed by a fear of failure. While setting a rejection goal can help, the agent also should be sure to examine why he failed after each setback so he can try to improve his methods and adapt his strategy. He should also make sure his failure goals are not so lax that they threaten the health of his business. A failure goal that requires you to not sell any houses in a given month will not lead to professional prowess and will make it easier for you to excuse lazy behavior and low aspirations. Alternatively, a failure goal that requires you to entertain multiple potential clients before eventually selling a listing will increase your skills, since you are required to interact with different personalities and learn whether a buyer is serious or just looking. Key Insight 3. Even when business is plentiful, real estate agents should never stop generating client leads. If agents have more business than they can handle at any one moment, they might be tempted to stop soliciting additional clients. 
If they do stop looking for new client leads, however, they may struggle when business slows down. Real estate agents must always prioritize lead generation, even when work is plentiful, to ensure that there will always be enough opportunities to meet long-term goals. Just because you seek out new client leads on a consistent basis doesn't mean you should accept every work opportunity that comes along. As more client leads come pouring in, agents will have to become picky about which leads they follow up on and which ones they refer to another agency. In It Doesn't Have to Be Crazy at Work, authors David Henmeyer Hansen and Jason Freed recommend that professionals be more stingy with saying yes to opportunities than with saying no. When agents say yes to a potential client, they are inadvertently saying no to clients that they haven't had the opportunity to consider. On the other hand, if a real estate agent politely turns down an offer to work with a client, he or she may still be able to work with that person in the future. Turning down opportunities for work may feel final, but saying yes to everything can limit earning prospects and pose an obstacle to meeting income goals. If your realty business grows to the point where you're constantly overbooked, you may have to consider letting go of your earliest, lowest-paying clients and sending them to agents who are still building their customer bases. You may be able to work with such clients later if they are able to bring you the amount of business you have come to expect. Key Insight 4. An administrative assistant should be a real estate agent's first hire. When agents have more business than they can handle on their own, they may be tempted to hire another agent with whom to divide the work. The more practical move, however, is to look for a talented administrative assistant who can maximize the agent's time by taking on routine tasks. The administrative assistant can take over an increasing number of responsibilities and may eventually become an executive in the company when the agent has moved on to collecting passive income from the business. If you are uncertain about what to look for in an administrative assistant or whether you're at a level where an assistant would benefit your workflow, you can start by looking for a virtual assistant before interviewing candidates that you plan to work with on a long-term basis. Hiring on as a virtual assistant can teach a worker how to delegate tasks and how to manage employees, skills that may become valuable as the company is built. Virtual assistants can be found through sites that host freelancing jobs and through companies that specialize in matching administrative specialties with entrepreneurs. When agents are selecting their first virtual assistant, they should be sure to test candidates by assigning a task similar to what the prospective employee will be expected to complete. Agents can also mitigate their risk by hiring assistants on a trial basis and by explaining that a certain standard will have to be met for that worker to be employed for a longer period of time. By making standards clear from the outset, agents can more easily let go of virtual assistants who are not meeting their needs and can assess whether their expectations are too high to be reasonably met by qualified applicants. Key Insight 5 an ideal employee goes beyond the minimum requirements of the job description. If a real estate agent has to choose between hiring an applicant who gladly accepts new responsibilities and a talented candidate who only fulfills the role he or she was hired for, the agent should always choose the former. Employees who do more than what's expected generally have the ability to become an asset to the company whereas workers who refuse new responsibilities can stagnate a business's growth. When agents hire a worker who exceeds expectations, they should compensate that employee at a higher rate than they would someone who simply meets the bare minimum. Exceptional employees deserve a higher level of pay because they will generate more value over time and will be harder to replace. In Lynchpin, Are You Indispensable?, Author Seth Godin explains that a number of companies have defaulted to compensating employees at the same low rate, which means that lazy workers who produce no value are being paid as much as highly productive team members who contribute significantly to the bottom line. Eventually, these ambitious workers are likely to realize that the amount of effort they are putting in is not proportionate to the amount of money they are making. 
This may encourage talented employees to search for higher-paying jobs where their contributions will be recognized. It might also tempt them to slow down so that they can match the energy levels of less talented colleagues who receive similar compensation. Godin argues that if a company wants to encourage top talent, then it cannot expect motivated employees to put in extra work without providing extra pay. Agents who wish to keep their best employees should remember to keep up with the standard compensation rates in their area for each position, and should set aside money in their budgets to reward an employee's hard work. Doing so will make it easier to retain talent and attract other hard workers. Key Insight 6 by requiring employees to routinely document their methodologies and results, a real estate agent can more easily hold staff accountable. Whenever employees follow up on a lead or secure a new client, they should document that activity in a spreadsheet. Likewise, whenever they attempt to close a deal or start a new advertising campaign, they should record actions and results. Real estate agents can only determine whether standards are being met if they know what their staff is doing on a daily basis. Routine documentation can provide a level of transparency that prevents lackluster employees from using excuses to shirk their responsibilities. Routine documentation can be used for more than simply holding employees to high standards. It can also help you determine whether an existing system or process is slowing down your team's workflow. In Rework, Authors Jason Fried and David Henmeyer Hansen point out that the vast majority of meetings are rarely productive because they break multiple employees' concentration and require everyone to block out a portion of their workday. If a real estate agent examines a spreadsheet where employees have been instructed to document their accomplishments and notes that Tuesdays are less productive than the rest of the week, the agent may conclude that the weekly Tuesday meetings are slowing workers down. The agent then can evaluate whether the weekly meetings are worth the lost productivity and consult employees about how best to mitigate the meeting's draining effect. It's possible that the same value could be generated by the meetings if fewer workers were invited, or that the meetings could be canceled altogether in favor of a weekly email summarizing the company's goals, progress, and standards. Key Insight 7 Millionaire real estate agents tackle difficult but essential tasks first. A real estate agent who prefers working with buyers to sending out advertisements can be tempted to put off that task and other unpleasant activities until later in the day. Cherry-picking enjoyable tasks, however, can leave agents disorganized and prevent them from reaching earning goals. A millionaire real estate agent must spend the first few hours of the day tackling necessary chores, no matter how difficult or mundane. Only after completing those activities can the agent move on to other tasks he or she might prefer. If you find yourself continually procrastinating when faced with boring but necessary tasks, it may be worthwhile to examine why these chores are so difficult to complete. In a 2019 Entrepreneur column, Writer Adekin Tank explains that self-reflection can help ambitious business owners break bad habits that prevent them from completing imperative but mundane assignments. For example, a real estate agent may find that she once had no problem gathering leads and acquiring listings on a daily basis. But over time, those tasks have become more difficult to complete. Her zeal for those chores may have lessened because they no longer seem new or exciting, Tank says. A person's brain is more likely to release dopamine when facing a novel or challenging task than when dealing with an already mastered activity. Humans often expect instant gratification for their efforts and have trouble putting off immediate profit in favor of a larger future return on their efforts. If an agent struggles to stay motivated when gathering leads and listings, it might be worthwhile to implement a small reward system as a motivational tool. Completing 10 calls to potential clients, for example, could be rewarded with another cup of coffee or with a 15-minute break spent reading a chapter from a favorite book. As long as the reward is something you truly want, you'll be more likely to push through boredom and meet your goals. Key Insight 8. 
successful real estate agents set and maintain focus on long-term goals. If agents only focus on meeting short-term goals, they may be tempted to rest between accomplishments. However, if they set long-term goals, they can still celebrate small victories but will recognize that a lot more effort will be required to achieve long-term goals. While working toward a long-term goal is essential, it can sometimes be difficult to know where to start. Setting deadlines for long-term goals can make it easier to achieve a result that might take months or years of work. In the bullet journal method, track the past, order the present, design the future, author and method creator Ryder Carroll recommends that readers plan for far-off goals by using a technique he calls the 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 method. Under this method, agents will divide their goals up into tasks that can be completed in five years, four months, three weeks, two days, or one hour. For example, an agent who hopes to net $1 million annually in personal income within five years would put that goal under the first category. In the four-month category, he might make it a goal to work up to selling 40 listings a month. In the one-hour category, he might set his task as calling five potential clients or editing the text for a new ad he plans to send out in two days. After coming up with the steps needed to meet the five-year goal, Carol recommends tackling the tasks in the one-hour and two-day categories first. Accomplishing the easiest tasks will provide momentum and confidence and make the other goals seem approachable. Agents should resist adding additional tasks until they have accomplished all the goals in the original timetable. Adding more tasks will create distractions and make it harder for the agent to focus on the ultimate result he or she hopes to achieve within five years. Important People Gary Keller is a real estate salesman, business coach, and motivational speaker. He co-founded the international real estate corporation Keller Williams Realty Incorporated. Dave Jenks is a business consultant who specializes in helping real estate agents and other entrepreneurs grow their business. A Papa Son is a writer, real estate investor, and motivational speaker who frequently co writes books with Keller. Author's Style After growing Keller Williams Realty from a small operation to an internationally recognized corporation, Gary Keller began focusing on helping other real estate agents achieve the same level of success. Shortly before The Millionaire Real Estate Agent was written, Keller and co-author Dave Jenks created instructional materials for realty programs offered through Keller's educational organization, Keller Williams University. The Millionaire Real Estate Agent was a direct product of that collaboration and reflects the kind of course material that might be found in one of Keller's classes. Readers are instructed to follow the models outlined in the program without question and are provided with flowcharts, sample scripts, and other supplementary material to help guide them through the process of organizing and expanding a business. At the end of the book, two appendices provide sample sheets demonstrating how an agent might set up expense reports and overall business budget. Although The Millionaire Real Estate Agent was written by Keller, Jenks, and co-author Jay Papasan, Keller frequently acts as the narrator. While the book relies heavily on Keller's professional experiences, the authors also include perspectives from other top real estate agents. Numerous quotes from millionaire real estate agents are threaded throughout each chapter, and a section at the end of the book provides extended profiles of 16 agents who net more than $1 million in income each year. The millionaire real estate agent has three parts broken into numerous subsections. The first part explains the mindset needed to implement Keller's methods. The second part outlines the four stages required for becoming a millionaire real estate agent, and the third part explains how a millionaire agent can retain success. A preface and acknowledgments section is also included. Author's Perspective Gary Keller, Dave Jenks, and Jay Papasan understand the value of creativity. 
The writing team has leveraged their own ingenuity to create a series of instructional and motivational books to help real estate agents reach their full potential. However, they don't believe in employing creativity simply for the sake of innovation. The authors repeatedly reinforce the book's core concepts and techniques, arguing that unless an agent adopts a sound model that can support professional endeavors, he or she will not be able to run a sustainable business, much less accumulate an annual income of more than $1 million. In some sections of the book, Keller, Jenks, and Papasan argue that agents should construct their business in such a way that they will eventually net $1 million in personal income without putting in much work at all. For example, they argue that employees' salaries should be competitive, but not so generous as to leave the agent with less profit. They also advocate for agents to choose a successor who can handle day-to-day -day business operations without their input. These practices may seem exploitative to some readers, since the agent would then be profiting disproportionately off the labor of subordinates. However, these methods are used by most company executives who earn high salaries. The authors argue that a realty business can only generate passive income after the founder has put in a substantial amount of work. Keller, Jenks, and Papasan additionally caution that if millionaire agents only earn income from their business when they're actively working, they won't be able to enjoy their newfound wealth. If they can create a self-sustained enterprise from a solo operation, they should welcome their profits. Striving for passive income can also allow an agent to pivot toward education and training, creating a younger class of millionaire agents who can further improve and enhance the industry. This has been InstaRead, reporting on The Millionaire Real Estate Agent by Gary Keller, Dave Jenks, and Jay Papasan. Narrated by Sam Scholl. Copyright 2019 by InstaRead. Production copyright 2019 by InstaRead.